United Airlines has announced, or it's being reported that they will announce actually in October, that they're going to take their gate agents, the people who take your ticket when you get on the plane, and these are people who are unionized and make you know, in the neighborhood of forty to $50,000 a year. They, they, that's a decent middle-class income in many parts of this country. They're going to take these folks and, and fire them in a bunch of cities and hire instead uh, contractors, subcontractors, hire companies that pay their employees 9 to $12 an hour. So, they're, you know, they're taking $40,000 a year is around, what, 36 bucks an hour or something? I don't know what it is. I don't know how to do that math. But in any case, they're taking people who are making a decent living, and they're going to replace them with people who are making poverty wages. Now, why would United do that? Because these, this, this is the Walmart business model. The, the McDonald's fast food business model is now starting to explode across America. I mean, it got a lot of publicity over the last few months, particularly because of Occupy and because of the 15, uh, you know, uh, $15 minimum wage movement and the activity in Seattle. And, and what happened was all these big companies that hadn't been using the Walmart fast food business model said, whoa, look at this. We could do this? Holy cow. Now, let me explain. The Walmart fast food business model is really, really simple. You pay people a low enough wage that it's legal. It's above the federal minimum wage of $7.25 an hour, but, net, but it's low enough that they are poor enough when they work for you that they qualify for food stamps and housing assistance and, uh, and, and medical care. So the Walmart fast food business model is... Let's have part of the cost of our employees, those things that keep our employees alive, their food, their medical care, their housing, let's have those costs paid for by the taxpayers, and we can take the money that we would have otherwise paid those employees, and we can give it to our stockholders, and our executives can take a larger paycheck. This is called internalizing profits and socializing costs or externalizing costs. And companies all around the all around the country, all around the United States, and this is something that, you know, it's it's it, in most countries you can't do this. Cuz in most countries the minimum wage has been indexed to inflation. If our minimum wage was indexed to inflation right now it'd be about 12 bucks an hour. Which means that most minimum wage workers would not qualify for food stamps. They'd only qualify if they had a very large family, a lot of kids. And they were the only worker in the house. Back in the 60s, in 68, which is the year that I'm referencing, that you, if you index to minimum wage workers, and in 68, I was one of them. I was a DJ at a local radio station, and, and I also worked at a gas station and at Bob's Big Boy. Uh, back then, minimum wage workers earned enough that they did not qualify for food stamps. Nowadays, minimum wage workers, because we didn't index it to inflation, and the minimum wage is not $12 and something in change an hour. Instead, it's still only $7 an hour. Now, Walmart can do something here that they pretty much can't do in any other developed country in the world, and that is pay their workers so little that you and I, as taxpayers, if assuming that you have a job and you're paying taxes, that you and I are picking up the Walmart costs and the fast food costs. And this, you know, the, the, the math on this has been done. Congressional Democrats uh, released a report uh, earlier this year that suggested that American taxpayers are, are subsidizing every Walmart store in the country to the tune of 900000 to $1.75 million per year per store by picking up these costs, these, these what would otherwise be direct costs for employment. If Walmart was paying their workers $15, $20 an hour, if they were paying what Costco pays, we would not be subsidizing them.